When you think of professional Overwatch, who is one of the most recognized veterans in the scene? Among the many, Dylan Bignet, more commonly known as AKM, the star DPS player for Rogue and now Dallas Fuel, would be up high on that list. AKM is one of the premier hitscan players in the world of Overwatch, famed throughout the pro scene for his incredible accuracy and prowess on his favorite character, Soldier 76. He may be a veteran, but he isn't showing any signs of slowing down to the newcomers and is still at the top of his game. AKM made ripples in the nascent Overwatch Pro scene with his inclusion into both IDDQD and My Dong. But the first step of his inclusion in Pro Overwatch history was with the formation of the esports organization Rogue. Rogue was created on May 3rd, 2016, but the golden age of this team would not start until the following year when the meta shifted into the dive meta, and the three French DPS, Soon, AKM, and Nico, were united. That isn't to say that this Rogue roster was not a top-tier team, especially considering their win over Lunatic High in APAC 2016. But their rise to the top started in February of 2017 with the addition of Nico in conjunction with the earlier signing of Soon in December 2016. AKM, Soon, and Nico, three talented DPS players who represented the French Overwatch scene, raised the tricolor flag of France over the entirety of competitive Overwatch and made their presence known to the world. The rise of Rogue started in Misfits with the spark of a new dive meta where mobility based hero compositions enveloped and eventually overwhelmed the slower tank compositions. This new meta was where Rogue's three incredibly talented DPS were let loose. Instead of playing compositions with large health pools and strong crowd control ultimates, players could rely on mechanical skill and teamwork to dance circles around tankier enemy teams. This new strategy resonated with Rogue and with Nox switching from support to tank, and with this, Rogue's now infamous dive squad comp was born. Soon, as the terror of enemy backlines, Nico's mid-range powerhouse Genji and AKM as the team's backbone made up the foundation of Rogue's dive squad comp. AKM provided the important long-range damage to tip the scales in Rogue's favor, while also stabilizing the friendly backline with his firepower and biotic field. This triple threat was explosive. Pulse Bombs could end team fights before they even start, while Dragon Blade and Tactical Visor have potential to get team wipes. The sheer amount of damage Rogue was capable of dishing out overwhelmed enemy teams as they would struggle to deal with the triple French DPS threat. The mobile artillery that is AKM, Unko, and Winds proved to be formidable as the trio had enough healing, damage, and peel to survive most engagements. This allowed the trio to continue their job of providing healing and damage throughout the teamfights. But no meta is eternal, as what has a beginning must also have an end. The French team led by AKM were the kings of Overwatch for three months before they headed to Korea for the Apex series, where they were finally dethroned. The Frenchmen were knocked out of Apex Season 3 in the group stage, being ousted by Lunatic High and Kongju Panthera. This would also be one of the last times a Western team competed in Apex. As of July 7, 2017, the OGN production team announced that no more Western teams would be invited to future Apex tournaments. In the next few months leading up to the Overwatch League, Rogue attempted to secure a spot, but were ultimately unable to, which quickly led to their disbandment. This would mark the end of an era of one of the strongest Western teams to ever play the game. With the end of Rogue, the talented roster was released and became free agents. However, their free agent status did not last long as they were quickly snatched up by Overwatch League teams. Soon and Unko were snatched up by the LA Valiant during the initial signing period and played as starters. AKM was acquired by Dallas Fuel during the end of Stage 1 after missing the initial signing period, 
The news of AKM's acquisition was a significant moment in the Overwatch League, grabbing the attention of the community who looked forward to the Frenchman's return. Board for breaking news as well. Astros just announced they will be bringing AKM onto the roster at the next signing period. So already big changes happening for the Fuel as we head into Nambani. Which AKM is a tremendous player. It's a huge addition for this Dallas Fuel roster. The high ground effect returns to the point front line. He's hoping to get it out. Maybe he was trying and got But AKM having sort of free reign. Give it to me. Flutter had like a sick tap by his in stage one on this map. If you remember all the way back, like stage the same exact point as uh, you know, once you get in towards point A here, it's just so open that uh, you can see just a lot of damage. AKM is a long range damage threat that commands respect. When you know AKM is on the enemy team, you move erratically, sticking to cover in hopes you don't lose all your health in a second. AKM's positioning and biotic field usage has also helped shore up the Dallas backline, making it expensive and more resilient to dive. The increased backline power has started to pull fuel out of their freefall in the start of Stage 2. AKM has allowed Dallas to have two win conditions as either AKM or Effect staying alive in a teamfight is usually enough to take apart weaker teams. With Taimu recently not playing in his original hitscan role, enemy teams have gotten used to Fuel only having one standout DPS threat, Effect. However, the addition of AKM gives the other Overwatch teams something to think about besides Effect when formulating their strategy against Dallas Fuel. AKM plays the DPI of 1800, an in-game sensitivity level of 2, giving him an EDPI of 3600. His aim is classic, slow tracking style, following the movement of the enemy model with smooth tracking showing his command of enemy animations. With this EDPI, AKM can make the micro adjustments necessary to shoot bullets and rockets towards you constantly with great accuracy. AKM makes great use of the rocket splash capability as well as its burst damage potential, making his Farah pick as dangerous as his soldier. Many teamfights have had the door slammed shut, kicked open, or just flat out blown off its hinges on the back of AKM's rockets. Winston, and they've nearly got it there. They're so close to taking point B. Now they're gonna get it here as soon as Bishu is will. eliminated. That barrage, actually! There is a little known secret to getting 100% accuracy in Overwatch. If you ram your barrel into the enemy's hitbox and pull the trigger, every last bullet will hit. Jokes aside, while Soldier mostly wants to keep the enemy at a distance, when his team has a clear advantage, AKM likes to push into the engagement to increase his damage and accuracy. Pushing into the engagement means being closer to your tanks and healers, lowering the damage fall off, and increasing the size of the targets because they'll take up more screen on the map. Especially when contesting last points on maps with huge defender spawn advantages like Hanamura, Gibraltar, Nubani, Hollywood, and Volskaya. Pushing into the fight as a soldier will help clear out the defenders, making it easier to cap the point. The trade-off of this move is the increased danger of getting fragged by the enemy team because you are leaving the comfort zone of long range. Soldier's E ability, Biotic Field, is a great AoE heal, earning him the name Healer76 amongst players. Healing 40.8 HP for 5 seconds on a 15 second cooldown, AKM uses the field in two major ways. First is to sustain the backline from the enemy aggression of diving tanks. This use of the ability should not be underestimated, as keeping a backline compact and healed up throughout a dive with the AoE healing creates chances for the backline to either kite back from the dive or frag out the dive. The longer your backline survives, the more damage and healing it can produce. The second use case is healing away chip damage to build up his ultimate. AKM is one of the better Soldier 76s in the league, with an average ultimate buildup of every 148.5 seconds and with an ultimate fight win rate of over 50%. More alt translates into more fights won. Another thing AKM is known for is his Farah play, which he plays in a stable, looking for dead angles kind of style, most notably versus dragons on Nepal. AKM plays Farah to set up kills for his team. You can see as he takes high angles, sneaking in rockets past the Orisa shield, bumping in the damage to get targets low, forming a crossfire between him and the rest of his team. From XQC, comboed with that barrage, like you said, Noah. That's a big one. He was waiting for this one, and everybody Ooh. just on the ground, eating some rockets. More recently, we have seen McCree, Widow, Sombra, and Genji start to be played by the young Frenchman, with his solid foundations as a god-tier soldier, and the ability to flex when needed, 
AKM is building himself up into one of the deadliest tools in Dallas's arsenal. With the addition of AKM, the Dallas Fuel lineup has received yet another god-tier powerhouse, bringing the count up to five god-tier players on the team. Hopefully, Dallas can start realizing the true potential of its star-studded lineup, which reaches all the way from Tracer to Soldier 76. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out our channel for more action-packed content. Also, like and share this video, and click the subscribe button to join our notification squad. Thanks for watching.